going in their veins. Mackie and Judd on Score North and scorenorth.com. We got a lot of hungry people and personnel, man. Those guys are always, it's, it's great. You know, it feels like, and honestly, it feels like my old uh, trading days where you had, you know, you know how to, you know, I was, you know, I was responsible for taking the risk, but you had people giving you ideas all the time, right? You had a research and strategy group and you had, you read third party services and you're just looking for ideas, looking for ideas is ultimately my job and Kevin's job and Rob's job to sign off on that final idea. But like, we just love ideas. We love information and that's what it is. And these guys are probably blowing up my phone right now, giving me great ideas. And so we'll keep exploring those. Oh man, people just, you know, not that we should be judging everything off Twitter, but People are mad, Judd, that we have uh, insinuated that maybe Quasi is not operating alone here. That maybe there's been some influence from the front office and ownership group. I'm texting him right. Making I'm texting him right now. There's still time to release a few guys, and I'm going to text <laughs> them the names. Cut them all. I'm cut them all. <laughs> oh, amazing. I got right. ideas. This is uh, this is Mackie and Judd here, Daily Minnesota Sports Entertainment, and it is Reckless Speculation Thursday. To all who celebrate. That means we bring in our friend Darren Doogie Wolfson from the Five Eyewitness News Sports Department, the Scoop Podcast, for inside information about your favorite Minnesota sports teams. What's going on, dudes? What's up, Phil? Hi, Judd. Hi, Declan. Happy Reckless Speculation Thursday. I don't think I need to necessarily recklessly speculate. That Quasi Adolfo Mensa is all about collaboration. So, yes, on the influence from others. Yes, on the influence from above. Yeah. So uh, here, let, let's get into some meat and potatoes offensive line talk here because ultimately oh, it's great. Oh. Zadaria Smith, love it. Uh, I like I like getting I like getting you know fresher you know along these defensive positions. I, I like the Jordan Hicks move. I like the the Brandon Phillips move. I, mean, you're, I you're like real... these moves too. Can I pause though? Yeah. Your little whatever it'll end up being. Maybe it's a rant on on them needing to fix the offensive line. But on Zadaria Smith, I agree. I like the signing, but like I need to see him in action a bit. Like back surgery, 29 years old. I don't care if you're 25, but back surgery, like I just I pause yeah. ever so slightly. Now, if he can play 16, 17 games, if Daniel Hunter can play 16, 17 games, yes, look out. The defense should be marketedly better. The defense has been a train wreck for two consecutive years, but I'm just saying I need to see him in action before I go all in on like, you know, popping the champagne on Zadarius Smith now being a Viking. Yeah. No, I think I think that's a fair assessment. And even if he does pan out, if he's healthy and everything is great and Daniil is healthy, you know, your defense should take a step forward. But the thing that has held the Vikings back offensively the most since they signed pocket passer, non-mobile Kirk Cousins is offensive line. And to this point, the starting offensive line from last year is pretty much, I mean, it's the same. I mean, right now, Garrett Bradbury is your center. Right guard is open for competition. Um, the news from this morning, and, and you've had this, you've been tracking this, but Ryan Bates, uh, Ryan Bates is the, is the guard from Buffalo, 25 years old, that started the last five games for the Bills, did very well uh, for the Bills down the stretch in the playoffs too. And he, he so he visited the Vikings, vis, uh, visited the Patriots, the, the Bears. He winds up signing an offer sheet with Chicago. And so now it's either going to be Chicago or the Bills can match. So take another one off the board if uh, if you're talking about upgrades to the offensive line, Dukes. Yes. So the Bills have five days to match. You said it as a restricted free agent. The Bills absolutely can match Chicago's offer. I'll be curious to see what the offer entails. No surprise. We've seen this oftentimes going back many, many years. The team that gets that last visit, so the visit order was Vikings, Patriots, Bears. He left Chicago yesterday. Oftentimes, that team that gets that last visit ends up winning the free agency battle. Yeah. I'm bearing the lead a little bit, though, for sake of our audience. The Vikings did make an offer. I at tweeted some people on Wednesday that the Vikings wanted him. I didn't need to be the 12th reporter this morning confirming what Brad Biggs of the Chicago Tribune put out there, that the Bears had signed him to an offer sheet. But for sake of our conversation, I can tell you this scoop segment, the Vikings wanted Ryan Bates. They made him a nice offer. I don't necessarily know if it was the same offer the Bears made. The Bears certainly have a little bit more financial flexibility than the Vikings. But make no mistake about this. The Vikings made Bates an offer. 
they wanted him badly. Yeah. All right, so let's back up a bit. What's plan B now? Well, I mean, do they circle back on Billy Turner, the former Packer, Moundsview High School's own Shoreview native? He is still out there. Heck, he's in town right now if you wanted to have him visit. They did inquire early. I'll check and see if they circle back. The most popular question I've gotten on Twitter going back two weeks, will the Vikings make a move on J.C. Treader? Yeah. Really good pass blocker, right? The Browns let him go. I'm not entirely sure why the Browns let him go, but the Browns let him go. Really good offensive lineman sitting out there right now. When I have something that I can definitively report, I will. Do I think, for sake of reckless speculation, do I think his name has come up at TCO Performance Center? 100%. Do I know how far that's gone? Not necessarily quite yet. So stay tuned on that front. Duke, so let me add one more thing on yeah, J.C. Treader real quick here. So I think part of the issue with the Browns was you know the money, and they, and they were looking to make a move for a quarterback, obviously, but... Uh, he, this is from an SI.com article. So even though he played in games, he was basically never healthy because of knee and ankle injuries. He would sit out practice on a regular basis. So do, is it possible the Vikings and other teams are trying to figure out is his, is his leg a ticking time bomb here? And, you know, you get him in and all of a sudden, you know, he goes from being 31 years old to being 50 years old overnight because of injury issues. Yes, makes sense. Thank you for the background. Yeah. I apologize for not having done a deep dive. Thank you for having done that deep dive. So, yes, the way you lay that out, Quasi Adolfo Mensa with the Browns connection with Trider certainly has enough of a book on Trider. So, yes, yeah, so it's entirely possible their conversations internally have not extended externally conversations with Trider's representation because of that very reason. So, Dukes, let's talk about what uh, the um, the crazy quote off the top – of this show in which he talks about, you know, my scouts and my personnel d department. And you used the word correctly because it was used a bunch by the Wilfs as well, collaboration. What are you hearing about that process? Because I, I know fans, there's a certain um, segment of the fan base for the Vikings that gets upset when you deign to criticize how they might be going about their business. That being said, um, I found Quasi's press conference interesting in some of his read between the lines references as to how much control he has of things and how, how much um, the Wilfs especially are probably involved in saying we still really want to win in 2022. Behind the scenes, are you hearing much about how this is playing out? Because it does seem a competitive rebuild is almost contradictory in, in my opinion, mm -hmm. in some ways especially when you're where the vikings are at i'd be curious to know if there's any internal steam from your side on what the real feeling about this is well i mean there's certainly a lot of voices that quasi is listening to do i think the wilfs have put down the hammer to say like you go signs of darius smith no i mean i think mike petton drove the bus on on the smith interest mm -hmm. in large part i think ed donatel drove the bus on on some of the other moves they have made. Certainly Kevin O'Connell has, you know, intimate information when it comes to, you know, Hicks, the linebacker, having, you know, competed against him, Rams Cardinals, twice a year going back a couple years. So, you know, it's it's a team effort. I mean, is that the best way to put it? But I don't get the sense, Judd, that Ziggy and Mark are blowing up Quasey's phone on a daily basis saying, you need to sign this guy. I, I just, I, I don't. Do I think they, you know, put it out there that the plan was to be, you know, as competitive as possible here in 2022, that they feel like they can make a serious run come January of 2023? Yes, I do think that. Do I think that had something to do with Ryan Poles landing in Chicago, not here as general manager? Yes, I do. After we've seen what Chicago has done this offseason, pretty much blowing things up, hitting the reset button. But no, I just I don't think there's any sort of edict from above where Ziggy and Mark Judd are saying, you need to go chase this guy and only this guy and go get that guy no matter what. I feel like the Vikings have always been in a competitive rebuild for like, I mean, for sure for the last three seasons. You know, how is, and, and I'm actually 
pleasantly surprised that Quasi characterized it that way. You know, he I mean, he's being honest. Yeah, we're trying to straddle both sides of the fence. He literally said we're trying to live on both sides of the fence. And so I guess if you strip that down and say, okay, if you're let's let's take competitive rebuild, which I mean that's an oxymoron, right? Like that like it's not possible to be fully competitive while also sort of trying to rebuild. And it's not possible to fully rebuild if you're sort of trying to be competitive. So it all equals seven, eight, nine, ten wins, right? Like a competitive rebuild is what they've been the last two seasons. They've had a veteran quarterback in his prime, needs more offensive line help, needs some pieces on defense, and instead of maybe taking draft pick capital and and exchanging it for established players like the Rams have done, the Vikings drafted more players than any team in the NFL over a three year stretch in a win now window with Kirk Cousins, right? So I guess I'm curious to see it play out. I do think an injection of offensive-minded coaching is going to help this thing. But if you're trying to be as competitive as you can be, then you can't also be rebuilding. And and if you're trying to rebuild as well as you can and as quickly as you can, you can't also be trying to run it back. So it just feels like more of the same, even though they have a regime change. What are your thoughts? They've been stuck in middle purgatory for a really long time. Yeah. This roster with some more moves to come. So by no means is this the final roster that we will see week one come September. More changes are coming, including bringing in, you know, some draft picks, but I'm talking some other moves as well. But for the most part, like the core is in place. Like, I think they can improve. Like, I think they can get to nine, maybe even 10 wins. Heck, maybe even 11. But Phil, you talked about this plenty. The ultimate goal is to hoist that Lombardi trophy in early February. Is this the core that is going to get you there? Like, I just, I pause mightily on that. The narrative that is being spun, not necessarily verbally, but reading between the lines is this was in large part Mike Zimmer's fault. And Mike Zimmer deserves all sorts of blame for the failures of the last two years in particular, but if you want to go back, missing playoffs three of the last four. Wouldn't you love to hear his side of this at some point? Well, like he's been pretty quiet. I'm glad you bring that up. And this probably won't surprise you, the audience, but like he's battling some stuff. Like there's, you know, like I haven't had direct contact with Mike, so this is a little bit secondhand ish, but like him not landing anywhere, him sitting on the couch right now, like. Now, he's got those grandbabies that certainly help keep him sane, at least somewhat. But, like, Mike is pretty beaten up. He yeah. just is. Like, and I don't, you know, I don't, without direct correspondence, like, I don't want to use the word depression. But I'm just saying, like, I know from people that are friends with him, like, he's just, he's not in a great spot right now. Oh, it's yeah. too bad. Yeah, I, and, and I think we refresh. Yeah, yeah, and I think too, in, in his d- defense of, a bit as well. I mean, the disappointment of 2021, especially, I'm sure was huge because there were to, to go back a, a year now. There were expectations that I think were pretty big, and you know, from the first day of training camp, it didn't work, w- which is too bad. But I get that. Hey, on Zadarius Smith, Doogie. Uh, the one thing that I find, uh, to go back to your point too, which I think is dead on accurate, if he could play, awesome. But he's coming off a back problem. He's around 30. That's That certainly can't be dismissed as, oh, you're being negative. Um, have we seen any indication on the guarantees? Because I have not seen that yet. And ordinarily, if they're good, the agent gets that out immediately. Because the contract is, itself doesn't mean much. Um I feel like the I feel like we're going to find out the guarantees aren't as much as we probably expected, because if they were, somebody from the Zedarius Zedarius I keep saying Zedarius Zedarius <laughs> camp I don't know why I've got it backwards the Zedarius camp would have leaked those fairly quickly. You got it. I tried a bunch. Certainly got the confirmation. Yeah. It was a done deal. But tried to chase down what these incentives are. You know, he can earn an additional $5 million in incentives. Was curious what the 2022 cap number is. Sure. Lots yeah. of silence. Now, the contract will have to be filed with the league at some point, either later today or tomorrow. So we will have that specific information 
very, very soon. Mm-hmm. But yes, there is something to be said that the only numbers we saw out there the other day on Tuesday, three years, 42 million worth up to 47 million. Yeah. Let's be frank. There's a very, 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 very good chance he is not touching $47 million. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that'll be interesting to to see how this plays out. I mean, I guess where I'm at with this is you've already gone this far down the line, right? You've already you've already you've extended and restructured players who are past the age of 30 for the purposes of keeping the band together. You've added Zadarius Smith and and taking on you're taking on some level of risk with that contract. Keep going, like 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 J.C. Treader's knees. If he wants to keep playing football, aren't the like that's not the risk that I would draw the line at at this point. You know, you might. I mean, you're you're already taking on a lot of risk. You might as well keep going at this point, and 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 commit full on and see what you can do. I mean, what what are the other ways by which they can drastically improve the offensive line? I guess you could make a case for drafting Tyler Linderbaum. Maybe he's ready to step in as a rookie at center if they go in that direction. But then you have how to pick you... him at twelve. I mean, he's not going to be there in the exactly. second round. And then and then who are you drafting at cornerback now? Are you going into the second round? So you know, I think they have they have to address cornerback. And and middle of the offensive line in some capacity with another splash free agent signing or trade, because you're not going to be able to fix all these things in the draft. So that's what I'm curious to see play out here over the next two or three weeks with the second wave of free agency. You call it the second wave, but there are still first wave type free agents out there. There were third slash fourth wave free agents that came off the board quickly. Think about the tight end the Vikings signed. Like, that's not a guy that typically signs three days into free agency. So free agency, to me, has been interesting. But Mm -hmm. there are still plenty of guys out there. There are guys that Ed Donatel knows well at the quarterback position, Fuller, Callahan. Yeah, and there are still a number of offensive linemen. I don't have the full list, but, you know, we touched on Treader. We touched on Turner. So there still is an opportunity to add a guy or two. I need to look at the latest cap projections, where they're at in terms of space. Pre Zadarius Smith, after the Adam Thielen reworking of his deal, they were sitting at approximately seven million dollars of space. But then they turn the Daniil Hunter roster bonus into a signing bonus, so they end up creating that much more space. But now we need to see what the Zadarius Smith contract is. So I'll be curious to see how much cap space they have remaining after we see the Zadarius Smith numbers. Mm-hmm. Let me add one I more th- thing on the Vikings. Uh, Kevin O'Connell did some sit-down interviews on Wednesday with local TV stations. My colleague Joe Schmidt ended up doing the interview. Kevin was trying to spin it that he loves the depth of this roster. Now, was that just coach speak? He certainly has watched a lot of video (laughs) since he's been hired. But remember what Mike Zimmer told us in early September, pre-week one against Cincinnati, that he only trusted 25 to 26 players. On the fifty-three man roster, so yeah, it's, again, it's it's more. It's trying more, to suggest there's all sorts of depth. Yeah, I mean, it's more. It, so that even that comment, that comment is not meant to be a shot across the bow at Mike Zimmer. Like it, he's no, just, I don't he's just talking Kevin about the roster. Knew. Yeah, but, I don't think Kevin even knew that Mike had made that comment. Like, but if Mike, but Mike viewed that roster, which is it's ninety percent the same roster, right? I mean, it's eighty to ninety percent the same roster, and Mike viewed it as being completely unusable past the 25th player to the point where he wasn't playing any draft picks basically last year, right? And so the new coach comes in and I love the depth of this roster. We can coach this thing up, right? So, I mean, this is all headed toward either the Vikings are right and Mike Zimmer was an absolute cancer and anchor for this team the last two years, which, by the way, like four years ago, he was part of the a big part of the reason why they overachieved and went to the NFC Championship game. And by the way, four years ago, he predicted – his downfall, I right? Know. At the yeah. combine, right? Yeah. March of Tied 2018, a- or I guess it would have been February of 2018, whatever, late February, early March. Yeah. He predicted that if they sign a quarterback, it was going to be doom and gloom. Exactly it's just, right. It's just like one more. Sorry, I'm just like, I'm, I'm going apoplectic here. Mike Zimmer is probably the third best coach in Vikings history. You got, you got Bud Grant, Dennis Green, and I think Mike Zimmer is probably the third best coach in Vikings history. He's I agree. Fift- 15 games, 16 games, over 500. Who else would you make a case for? Um... Jerry Burns, I guess, would be the only other. Which is fine. But, yeah, I mean, I think it's, like, almost an ink, right? Like, Mike yeah. Zimmer, definitively the number three coach in Vikings. And, and up until a couple of years ago, almost everyone, every Vikings fan would have said, yeah, I mean, yeah, he's probably a top ten coach in the NFL. Like, people love Mike Zimmer. Zim, right? And now it feels like the entire organization and a lot of fan stances. And I listen, he deserved to be fired. I'm not, I'm not disputing that. 
But we've gone so far in this direction of he was the thing holding everything back to the point where we're just going to run it all back and and we're going to and we're going to trash him on the way out, right? Like, really? I'm just like this doesn't sit well with me, I guess. Now they're not necessarily like spewing all sorts of negativity. It's it's more, you know, implied, insinuated. But yeah, like and do I think they're going to be better this year? I do. I think now that we see what the core is in large part going to be, I think they are going to be better. This based on on some health luck as well. But like, do I think they will win more than seven games? I do. Like, do I think it's realistic they get to 10? I do. Do I see a realistic path to them winning the NFC, especially now with Tom Brady back in the conference? Phil, that's where I struggle. All right, let's be up front here. We, you, we all have to be, and if you're a Vikings fan, you are going to be hoping the same thing. Kevin O'Connell has been lying a lot. That's your, that is your hope. Because when you get up to a microphone and say, Garrett Bradbury, I, I think Garrett Bradbury is real. Oh, no, you, Kevin, you can't change him. You can't make him grow. Um, you're not. And they're going not picking to... up the option, right? I mean, they have to pick no, up no, the but, option if they but, want to in a few weeks. But they're not picking up that fifth year Garrett Bradbury option. But Viking fans should pray that Kevin O'Connell was basically pulling Joe Schmidt's leg. That's your hope. If Kevin O'Connell really looks at the depth and is like, this is fine. Now, if he had said, I want to explore it, that's cool. Okay, that's exactly right. But this pie in the sky positivity stuff that they're trying to espouse. It's got a, it's got a point where you hope it's nothing more than them just saying that. Well, it's also putting Kevin O'Connell in a really tough spot. I think when he got hired, it was it was it was all right. This is this has potential to be great. He comes from the Sean McVay coaching tree, but he's going to have time to sort of breathe and and they can they can retool this roster, maybe find a quarterback. But because they've committed so hard to competing in 2022 23. It puts a lot of pressure on a first-year coach. He's never done this before. Oh, yeah. He's never managed two-minute drill, four-minute drill. He's never managed egos. To, I mean, like he has as a coordinator, but it's a different game when you are in charge of everyone's family and everyone's livelihood, right? And so it would be nice to have a couple-year buffer to take some lumps and to not have the pressure turned up. But, like, they've kind of taken that grace period away, haven't they? They have now. Like, I don't foresee them pulling a Jimmy Haslam and firing the coach after year one if they don't make the playoffs. Like, I think Kevin O'Connell's going to be here for a while. But, yeah, yeah, make no mistake about that. Yeah, the pressure has been has been ramped up. And that's where, like, I was on board with the Ryan Poles, Matt Eberflus philosophy. Now, it probably helps that they have a, a rookie quarterback, right? that a quarterback isn't eating up a ton of their cap space, but like the bears were all about hitting the reset button. If there ever was a time to hit the reset button here, it was now. And so I'll continue to admit, like I didn't foresee this little of change. Like I really thought there would be more change than this. So admittedly I was wrong on that. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, I right, give us a, let's, let's empty the scoop bag here again. You know, the, the twins need another pitcher. I've I've seen very little steam since the initial Frankie Montas reporting. What are you hearing when it comes to the Minnesota Twins as they push also to sort of go all in in 2022? Yeah, well, I mean, I checked this morning just because there hasn't been any movement on Johnny Cueto, the best remaining free agent starter. So I texted somebody. I said, hey, should I rule out the Twins on adding Johnny Cueto? I was told no. But as of this morning, Phil, they had not extended Johnny Cueto in offer. And I'm not suggesting Johnny Cueto is, you know, Jacob DeGrom, but I think he would probably help. He's in a good spot health-wise. So keep an eye on that situation still. John Heyman had the steam on Wednesday night that the A's very well may carry Manaya and Montes into the start of the season. Montes did throw earlier this week through a couple innings, which suggests the A's are not close to completing a trade. I continue to hear that the Twins prefer Montes over Manaya, but also that Oakland prefers to trade Manaya compared to <laughs> Montes more immediately. Manaya free agent after the year. Montes still has two years of team control. But I'm sure the Twins are maintaining dialogue. They had been earlier in this week, so I don't know why that would stop. So the Twins are maintaining dialogue with the A's. What, what do we think the price tag on Manaya would be, Doogie? 
Well, one year. Right. That's what I'm saying. Is it's he's not at, his track? What but... nine eight nine nine? Like mm-hmm. they they avoided arbitration. They came to an agreement the other day. But I mean, it's it's a healthy number. I don't necessarily think you need to give Austin Martin or Royce That's what I'm Lewis. One year. So I think it's somewhere you know go down that list in that six to ten ranking prospects wise. Okay. You know, maybe it's one of those guys, then prospect, you know, 22, 23. So maybe it's two prospects for Manaya, but not one of your top five guys. I'm That's in. It's a that. little bit more conjecture, but we're talking about yeah, one sure. year and we're talking about Oakland not wanting to absorb any money. So Oakland then would save 10 million more dollars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of, especially when you start to look at the, the, someone had yesterday, uh, they went back and looked at those Marlins trades, like the Giancarlo Stanton trade and I think the Christian Yelich trade. And all of those young players the Marlins got back for those established sluggers are now out of their system. So we look at these prospect lists on a regular basis, and you can go back and do the exercise. Go look at the Twins prospect list, the top 10 prospects, 2005, 2010. You know, Yeah, there's a Joe Maurer sprinkled in 20 years ago, and there's a Justin Morneau, and there might be a a Brian Dozier or something, but there's going to be five or six guys on the current Twins top 10 prospect list that don't really do anything meaningful in the major leagues. And there might be one or two superstars. So I just, even if like, even if I'll throw a Miranda out there. If, uh, if the A's said, all right, we need either, either Royce Lewis or Miranda for, uh, in a package for, for, uh, Bramantas. Yes. It sounds like a steep price to pay, but. Oh, I would do that. Yeah, in a heartbeat. Up. Yeah, in a heartbeat. In a heartbeat. Yeah. Like yeah. the Twins balked at including Aaron Hicks in a trade ten years ago for Cliff Lee because that's going to be our center fielder of the future. Like, well, obviously in retrospect, you would have liked Cliff Lee against the Yankees in the 2010 playoffs. Scooby. So just don't be Scooby. Don't be I Scooby. 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 Scooby with the scoops. Who's it's a good the boy? Mail. Is that a woman or man? I can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> but why would he? 2022, she dudes, the, you know what? Matter. Yeah, it doesn't well, matter anymore. She is wearing a hat. Yeah, I really can't tell. Now he or she is walking across the street. That is a female. Okay. <laughs> okay. Why would that, she wear that? Shamanai is that Frankie Montas? Which one is it? Who knows? Maybe there's some big package so she, at my door. So that's yeah. a nice door, doorbell. Nice sounding. Not too loud. Not too obnoxious. I like your doorbell. It's actually a little obnoxious, and it's been the same doorbell, Judd, Don't since ever, we moved in here. Yeah. Crap, what year did I move in here? I don't know. Don't ever get the door. 19 years ago. Wow, dude. Like, wow, remember back dude. in the day, the parties in the garage? Phil dressing oh, yeah. up as Macho Man, Randy Savage. Some beer pong in the garage. It's Lots of time, beer man. pong. Yeah, I could go for I, a beer oh, pong mercy. party. We should. Why don't you have any more beer pong parties? <laughs> we will. You know what? This summer. Yeah. You got to get those kids. You, you, know, you can't wait. You, those kids can't wait till they're 21 to start enjoying life, okay? I think, you know. Let's I'll get them summon the here. company private jet out to your location, <laughs> Phil. We'll pick you up. We'll get oh, you here yeah. for a weekend of beer pong. Yeah, More I of a it. flip cup guy. More of a flip cup guy. That's really? fine. We can do that too, Dak. Yes. I feel love like flip, flip, flip cup. cup is just a lot of unnecessary splashing and just... Uh, mm. uh, drinking like games a, are a complete like waste a of time. And then you get yeah. mad at your, you get mad at your friends who can't and flip let's the cup. drink and, and debate things. Let's debate <laughs> sports, okay? Put the games away. The games are for the kids. The drinking is for the adults. Judd just wants to sit in a corner quietly, pounding Leave Surly Furious. No, I'll talk to yeah. Dukes about stuff. Don't no, talk to me. Kidding? No, no, yeah, no. no he'll, yeah. Thing. Yeah, he'll interact a little bit, but yeah, you will be slamming yeah. Surly Furious. No doubt yeah. about that. You want Damn some more straight. scoops? Yeah. 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 I checked again this morning because, like, to me, the Wolves remain on a crash course playing the Memphis Grizzlies, which is my wish, my hope, for my own selfish reasons. Yeah purely entertainment reasons, like give me Wolves Grizzlies in the first round. Well, Memphis, there's a million ways to slice and dice it, but Memphis is about the best rebounding team in the league, right? Mm. Certainly grabbing offensive rebounds, getting second chance points. The Wolves are one of the worst rebounding teams in the league. Why not bring somebody in that can play six to eight minutes a night? You have that open roster spot. Why not go sign Willie Colley Stein? Why not go sign... Greg Monroe, not even necessarily right this second for the rest of the season. Bring them in on a 10-day contract, then assess, see where that individual is at. Then you can make a determination, okay, let's sign him for the rest of the season. I need to even double-check the rules, whether you can sign a guy now and he's playoff eligible. I suppose if he's on the market, why couldn't he be on your playoff roster? But I should have checked that. But 
point is, why not even bring somebody in to help you through this push the rest of the regular season as you're trying to avoid being in the play-in tournament? Maybe you can climb up, get the six. I still think it's a long shot, but like last night, Phoenix has oh those God. three big men. DeAndre, DeAndre Ayton, Ayton yeah. JaVel McGee, Biombo. Yeah. Like, you mean to tell me the Wolves couldn't use another big man? But I checked on a couple guys this morning. Zero traction. Amazing. Mm-hmm. So, well, yeah, I mean, that game, and we're going to talk more about the Wolves here, but last night, especially with Towns in foul trouble, he goes off the court. And listen, Jared Vanderbilt's been great this season. Naz Reed, definitely, you know, effective offensively. But then you look at those two guys standing next to DeAndre Ayton and JaVel McGee. <laughs> And there's a, there was a couple, and I think I think rebounding was pretty neck and neck statistically last night. But there were a couple possessions where it was like one, two, three chances. You know, ball gets tipped <laughs> up, and it's like it's like playing keep away from uh, you know from a five year old. Even and Jared Vanderbilt is a great crafty rebounder, but not when he's standing next to DeAndre Ayton. Correct, and yeah, I mean I think the rebounding numbers were pretty neck and neck. But I'm just I'm specifically talking about a potential matchup with Memphis. Thinking about some of the Memphis games. Yep. This year, they can use rebounding help. Last night was also a reminder. Like, Phoenix is my pick to win it all. I know there's a lot of Brooklyn steam, especially with the news coming out of New York City today that Kyrie Irving can now play in home games, that even though Brooklyn looks like it'll be a 7 or an 8 seed, that they can get through and make a run in the Eastern Conference. Other people are saying, hey, you know, until somebody dethrones Milwaukee, Milwaukee's my team. You know, there's, you know, a little bit, maybe a little bit of Philadelphia steam as well. But like Phoenix is my pick to win it all. Watching Phoenix last night was another reminder down Cam Johnson, down Chris Paul, just how bleeping good. How about that? They the, are. The, the and how Suns good a coach and coach Monty Williams is. You watched the Suns in the fourth quarter last night. They were without a Hall of Famer <laughs> and they still look like that. It's just ridiculous. Booker, and though. the guy's still playing at a Hall of Fame level. I mean, Chris yeah. Paul is on the verge of coming back. He's had a wonderful year. Even though he's up there in age, Chris Paul is still a phenomenal player. So, yes, give me Phoenix to win the championship. So, no harm in the Wolves losing last night. Just unfortunate when you're up 13 at the half, then to be outscored by 22 points in the second half, lose by nine. Booker, though, in that last quarter, in the fourth, oh, my God. He is he he is basically t- taken on – the Chris Paul persona like he's in your face it was fun it's it's so much fun to watch a team like that that knows exactly how to to win and when to trigger that like it is such a difference in in all sports but my god like the Suns were like oh we'll we'll stick around we'll stick around okay now it's go time and the Wolves were like whoa (laughs) that was it and yes and also a reminder that if the Wolves do end up in the play-in Yep. Then the Clippers beat them, upset them at Target Center. So then the Wolves are playing the winner of the 9-10 matchup for that eight seed. Let's yep. say the Wolves end up as the eight seed. It would be a very quick playoff series. Like maybe the Wolves could find a way to win one game against Phoenix, but it would not go beyond five games. I wouldn't be shocked if yeah. that would be a four-game sweep. So yeah. for sake of really gaining you know, some solid experience, postseason experience, like avoid Phoenix at all costs. Yep. Yep. Good to see Jimmy Butler bringing everyone together last night. <laughs> God, what a clown. Udana, Udana Dude, he tried to, he tried to fight Spolstra. Eric Spolstra. Did you see yeah, that? I know. Yeah, yeah. I know. He, he yeah. was challenged. So Eric, we couldn't see what Jimmy was saying, but there's video all over the place. Yeah, <laughs> there, was a, there was a fan and, court and, side that captured great video right Eric, behind the bench there. Eric Spolstra, he, he, he like is taken aback sitting in front of Butler saying, what, you want to fight me? And yeah. laughs at him. And then Udonis Haslam steps in. And by the way, 41 years old, still in the league. Played, he's played like 15 games for them this year. And he said, dude, I will kick your ass. I will kick your ass. <laughs> and that's he what went, I, by the way. And I wanted that. That's what Admiral I wanted. Not Jimmy mess with that Butler's dude. ass. Jimmy, Jimmy <laughs> Butler would, deserves put. to have his ass kicked. It would have been great to see. I would have loved every second of that. He deserves Well, Phil, that. I saw your tweet last night about, you know, some fake t- toughness there, right? Well, he's, like, a, he's, he's a fake superstar. Yeah. He's not, I don't think he's fake tough. I think he's a fake superstar. Well, I mean, he, he doesn't bring really guys together. Player, he's, div- he's divisive. Yeah, he's he can be. He's a, se- he's now, a second tier people, superstar. Yeah, there's some people like Tyus Jones who think the world of him. So, but yeah, there's he's polarizing to to say the least. But like, I don't know. Like, you think if push comes to shove, like he's really like Pat Beverly? Like, I can just tell you, like, fight you. 
Gary Trent Sr. No. reminded me a few weeks ago when I was at Gary's house that that how about that for a name drop? That yeah. that Bev grew up on the south side of Chicago. Like there's toughness there. You don't want to mess with Patrick Beverly. Yeah. That is that is authentic. That is genuine. I'm yeah, not convinced you. if push comes to shove that, that Jimmy's really going to engage. Oh, see, I thought you were going to go the other way. I thought you were going to say that my, that my radar's off there. I I agree no, with no. you. No, no. I think your radar is spot on, but I'm just telling you, like, I've seen some people over the years suggest a, a fake toughness about Patrick Dude, Beverly. Jimmy, no, no, no. Jimmy, Jimmy flies That's private and takes wine baths, that. okay? He's flying private and taking wine baths. He's not fighting anyone. Anyway. <laughs> Come on. It's ridiculous. And make a lot of coffee. I would have <laughs> loved to see him get his ass kicked in front of the fans during a timeout. <laughs> it would you? have been fantastic. So I would pay pay-per-view to see that. That's easily. what I always said. Cat. No. The day Punch of the him. practice, I would have kicked his ass. I would have, I would have fought him, and I would have laid him out. It would have Cat made at the time was statement. too nice. Yeah, Some but of that I don't Bev need that. toughness. No, but don't you have no a, rubbing off on Cat, which is but good. a breaking mm-hmm. point. I want breaking points. I want yeah, a point I mean, but where you Judd, just lose Cat it. was Cat was like twenty two years old. He was not in a position to. He I just wasn't agree. there confidence wise. He wasn't I, there. Well, yeah, I that's think Cat. I think Cat. If it was a, I, I mean, not the Cat's like the toughest dude, but. You know, I think if if that happened now, with the, with the confidence the cat has gained in part because of Patrick Beverly, yep, I think cat checks Jimmy Butler at practice. But I don't yep. think that was in a place to happen three years ago. Lost okay. in this all conversation. Right, all right, tough guy. I would have laid him out. All right, tough yeah. guy. His goal State side. won that game last night, so I'm just looking at the standings. It's still two. Memphis two in front of Golden State. Still no Steph Curry. So I still think the Grizzlies end up as the two seed. Okay. The Warriors end up well. They're three up on Utah, so I think Golden State is going to end up as the three seed. Yeah. So I'm telling you, I think it's trending toward Wolves Grizzlies first round of the playoffs because yeah. I do think the Wolves will beat the Clippers in that seven eight game. Yeah, nice. All right, Doogie, great stuff as always. Five Eyewitness News, the scoop. Go podcast. collaborate. Go no collaboration. Go work and collaborate with Joe Schmidt, James, the entire crew there. Okay. No, no, no. I'm going to grab the package and I got to run to Costco, yep. so I'll be doing that by myself. All right, so it's a dictatorship. Yeah, it's a dictator. thanks, Mike. A little bit. That's yeah. Bye, Mike. All right, see yeah. you, Doogie. See you right, later. Enjoy the rest of your reckless speculation Thursday. See All you, right. boys. Yep that uh, that scoop session presented by our friends at Federated Mutual Insurance Company. It's like having a great offensive line for your business. They're all about risk management, protection, and helping you maximize the success of your business. They specialize in various fields and industries. You can find a list of those at FederatedInsurance.com. And remember, at Federated, it's our business to protect yours. All right, you guys want to dive more into this Timberwolves game from oh, last absolutely. night? Absolutely. All right. So 